My name is Shervin Shari and I run Mutant Jukebox Music and Sound Design. I'm Russ Etheridge and I'm a freelance animator. I don't want to say where we, <laughs> when we met the first, first time. <laughs> yeah, no, we met uh, at a party, so we have yeah. a mutual friend. Most of us were, were music producers and you were yeah. the odd one out as an animator. I wanted to make films, so I sort of started just making stuff. And as the, like, the only way to make a film when you don't have a camera or yeah. like, <laughs> like actors yeah. or anything. Um, Start drawing. Yeah, you just have a, I just yeah. have a computer, so I just yeah. started animating. But it just made sense because, like, I think when we were that age, like when we were teenagers, yeah. it was like, oh, you're doing sound. Why don't if if I'm doing animation yeah. or video stuff, then like collaborating on things would yeah. be so easy. Well, we were, we were yeah, that's the thing that we were constantly collaborating. So yeah, it was exactly. like it was like a it was like a, a mini production <laughs> production house. There were there were multiple attempts to start like a collective of. Do you remember we did Carbon Sixty? Yeah, yeah, remember yeah, yeah. So yeah. we started a company which was going to be, we'll offer all the services. We can do the whole service from beginning to end. Yeah, there even was like, the acting. CD burning was one of the services <laughs> that we, we offered. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Um, yeah. And then you went to RCA. And yeah, I well, I did undergraduate first at Thames Valley University. Yeah. I was like, OK, I need to I need to do something. So I did sound engineering. I think it was it was just at the cusp of like all the studios turning digital, basically. And then when I went to kind of look for jobs, found that it was just really tough. Yeah. Really tough. So did you need to do? But maybe that was because of me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was like, do you, you have any jobs? Job? Not for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to uni to study sound arts and design, and that's where kind of everything just kind of yeah that's like opens up your world in a way. Yeah, uh, that was your spring board. Like, yeah. yeah. So did, but did you think? Do you think you actually needed the qualification, or was it more the environment that you were in? Yeah, I think it was the environment because of just what I was exposed to was just like way beyond what I was, what I was experiencing like in the in the circle of friends that you know, yeah. you know in, just in terms of like audio culture, like music culture, you know, yeah, which just kind of expanded my way of thinking about sound and music. The last year that was there, um, I completely like focused on making it real because I knew that if I walk out of uni without any anything to show for it mm. there's no way I was going to get a job yeah there had to be something that I had to be able to present so that's when we collaborated yeah because a part of my course um was uh, just to just make a series of short animations yep. and I just really yeah. loved it and then yeah. it needed sound so it was like perfect timing I yeah just gave yeah. it to you and you could do whatever you want yeah yeah and that, and that became a big part of my reel so that was uh, a springboard because actually what the animations that you did for those they were quite varied there was like a there was like a ninja one there was <laughs> yeah. like there was a of basketball course. one yeah. um there was there was a kind of a, a sort of like a horror one i remember so it, but it was varied enough that it kind of required kind of i guess both of us to flex different kind of muscles in yeah. the approach but in that first instance, you have to, like, I, I think collaboration is, like, the key part mm. of getting your work seen, right? When I was creating a website, that's when I started to kind of think about how is this all going to come together, the, the real is going to come together kind of coherently. That's when I kind of realised this is more than just about sounds, you know, it's, it's, you have to present yourself in the right way. Everybody goes through that phase of, oh, OK, well, I just want to make cool stuff. Yeah. But then... Um, Oh, you have to kind of be a business person as well. That um, kind of hit me. That yeah. was like, okay, <laughs> you know, that's this is that's the side where it just really all of a sudden you just yeah you you're doing what you're doing and you you start to kind of get into mm. things like tax and so on and so forth and you're completely not ready for, for, for yeah. all that because you you've just been sort of spending your time collaborating, having fun and so on and so forth. Mm. All that all that kind of side of it, which. Um, you forget that there there is a ton of paperwork to go through sometimes, you know. Yeah. To but after 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 university, it was the case that I was looking for a job, uh, you know, in studios and so on and so forth, and um, in post production post production houses and so. So you you were looking for full time work, and then you went. So then you were just kind of a freelancer. It just kind of happened that I didn't never intended to be a freelancer. With hindsight, I w I would have liked to have started at a company first, because. When you're a freelancer, then then you're in this 
whole world of trying to figure out things by yourself. Things just developed in that way, you know. Mm. And, and I started and I started working on odd bits and pieces of things, you know. Just one piece after another, you kind of I started to build the real trying to do better work, you know. Mm. But I was hungry for collaborating, looking at other 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 pieces of work and being like, oh, I want to do that type of work, you know. So you, you're constantly yeah. uh, looking for people to kind of collaborate with, and you do odd, odds uh, odd bits and bobs, you know, here and there. For very little money, but you you slowly yeah, build it up because you went through a point where I remember um, years ago when you said you would it was like changing your attitude towards your work from freelancing to being a business. I think a lot of freelancers tend to struggle with that, and yeah. like I, I, myself included, where you're kind of self-employed, but you rely yeah. on production companies to give you work, and it's really difficult to dis to go okay. Well, I'm freelancing, and I'm, which is it is a business. You're running a business, yeah. but freelancers don't always see themselves like that. Then to make that step to being okay, I am a business. What was the thing that made you sort of go, okay, I'm freelancing? What what was that? Where do you draw yeah. that line between when you were freelancing to when you were doing Newton Jukebox? It, I, I think it's it's the thing where you you know you're waking out of bed, <laughs> you just roll over and switch on your computer. <laughs> and you're like. You're like I don't know if I can do th do it this way, you know, because you just like blur the lines of like you know home work, you know, and this kind of thing. And so it was, it was. I think it's that point where you're like, okay, I need to get a studio. It's hard to find a uh, studio that you know is it's soundproof enough or like that you can make soundproof enough, and it's within your budget and so on and so forth. So, mm. but one of the things was like for me was. I need to I need to separate the two because I work in a sort of like a chaotic way so I needed these limits you know mm -hmm. to not you know so that you are going into work you feel like you're going into work and you're taking yourself seriously is such a big step then the financial start, side starts to kick in because then you're paying extra for a studio mm -hmm. and then you start to kind of flip a little bit in terms of <laughs> not flip but it, your 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 thinking starts to kind of change because you're like okay my time needs to be kind of um, measured in units in a way. Or you, it, that's when you start to kind of think about it a little bit more. That's how I how I went from thinking from a freelance mentality to to then a kind of a business mentality. What is the difference between how you approach getting new business from when you're a freelancer to when you were now that you're running a studio? I, d I don't. I don't think there's a dif d difference in necessarily. Everything kind of reduces down to in, in the creative industry is that you need to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. You need to be out there and you need to be talking to people and you need to send me real and so on and so forth. And you can't so creatively let your work just to kind of like you can't just kind of let it die in this kind of like go completely towards making just um, corporate or advertising kind of work. You need to. It, it needs to be maintained. You know. You, you mm. need to be balancing that side where. You are doing things that are uh, interesting in order to get other other work. It's only when I, so for instance, when I, I, I started to collaborate with a photographer called Matthew Donaldson, and he did this film, and that was like a f flip point because then you you you, you feel like you you're, you're building on things, and and, and that that went vir uh, viral. That was like a Vimeo staff pick type of oh, yeah, type, yeah. type of uh, situation, and it gets around, and then. Like I never had a particular sort of, I never would say I have a particular style. Mm -hmm. But then the more and more work you do, I don't know if you find this, the more and more work you do, it's not like you're intentionally building a specific style, but you, it's just who you, who, what you're choosing yeah. from your sort of thing. You, you went to, from university, you went to work uh, for some of the biggest sort of... Um, yeah, I sort of, <laughs> <laughs> I went yeah. from from uni and to going straight into my first job, which was at this huge company. Um, so the first thing I did, so I, I did um, an undergraduate in degree in sort of animation and it was like digital art. So from there, I was lucky enough to get into uh, uh, the Royal College of Art to do a master's. And actually that's where I met um, Tom and Ed, who are from animated. That's, that's how I know them. So it's a really important place to like meet your uh, contemporaries who are working in the same field as you. Because the people who you are uh, with at uni will be the people who you're working with. They're gonna be the people in the industry yeah, yeah. when you actually go professional. Mm -hmm. After I graduated, I um, 
got a job as a motion designer in the moving picture company mm, and yeah. they they do uh, really big jobs i mean they they have a film side and they have a commercials department so they do they at the time they were doing all the harry potter post production yeah it was really full on it was really um hectic but it just gave me a really good foundation of this is what the industry like it's like quite just the cold face of it. yeah it was yeah. like chucking you straight in the deep end yeah. but it, i just got to work on loads of projects i think I, I i worked there for two years before i left and i think i did something like a hundred jobs so a hundred projects wow. like worked on all these yeah. different things it was really good and then after that um i went freelance that was my first time being self-employed yeah and f when i was freelancing then having come off out of MPC uh, because I knew people in the post-production world it made the most sense to carry on working in that field I worked at the mill and Nexus and um, mainframe and a lot of the big um, animation and post-production houses did you find like the process of sort of um, sound and audio does it vary yeah like, it differently does, from it varies from but obviously I mean because I'm was part of like a small part of a big bigger machine in a yeah. lot of those places so my experience would be just them talking about it the agency would be have a lot of creative control in those places because the director would be kind of an external person yeah and they would come to those big post houses with an idea of what they're doing already so yeah. i'd have quite fairly minimal contact with what's happening with, on the sound side the smaller projects are kind of more fun because you have more creative control. You've got yeah. you're a bigger part of a smaller project, which is kind of more satisfying. So then working for Animate was really good. That was like a big change in my career. Running a project and actually having um, talks with the sound design directly, and yeah. the, the sound producers. We worked with Sonica quite a lot, which is another um, yeah. sound studio. But obviously there, I really wanted to get you involved, so it was really useful to have you on hand, and we were trying to get you on projects as much as yeah. possible yeah. so building that up was really important we'd worked a lot on um personal projects but to work professionally together is yeah. like really good it's really nice when we have projects where um there's budget for sound and we can choose who we're going to work with and then and then we get control to or freedom to collaborate with um sound producers like when you're when you're looking at composers real or like sound designers uh reels do you you take in the visuals as much as you take in the sound, so it's not necessarily mm. that if you're if you're a if you're a sound designer or a composer, you can't wholly rely on like your your brilliant skills at, at sound design and com composition. It's also who the people that you work with. I, I have to I have to really try to listen to audio. I think yeah. this is the thing generally with when I when I work with audio from working in a visual field, it's it's like audio is there. I mean, it's a super important part, and you know when it's wrong. Do you know? But I mean? everyone says that. Everyone, I know. everyone in the industry says audio is, is like is super important on it's this super project. Important. You know, but then when it actually comes to the like execution, is like the last thing. And then when you're on the phone to the back, so who are you again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're the sound guy, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, right? I think for for animation as well, it's it's even more important because you literally just have nothing. There's no recorded sound or anything like that. So yeah. you literally have to build it from scratch and. Because working on a commercial project, a lot of the time you might not have control over the sound or, or they've said right at the beginning, OK, we yeah. don't have any sound for music, so it's going to have to be a library track. OK. And then, yeah. and then you're kind of like, oh, OK, well, you know, it's, it's only going to reach a certain quality. Yeah. But like when you get to uh, have the sound created from scratch with someone, you know, when you work with a like, yeah. composer and, and a sound designer or whatever, um, then it will just lift a project. And that's something you can really get excited about that's when you can really focus and okay you'll start changing what you're making thinking okay well this this bit will have a sound that's you're not you know we can have an action and the sound's going to be off screen or yeah you know and that will draw your attention to what's going to happen next and you can think yeah. about that kind of stuff i Which guess i guess you yeah. just got to decide um is what you're looking at fitting like it, like is what they're showing you with the visual and the audio that they've made is is that working together yeah or, or are they kind of competing with each other sometimes you'll give a piece of animation to someone and they'll do sound design and you're like you have to let it s sink in a little bit because you've yeah. been working on it so hard and then you imagine it a certain way and then obviously someone's creative vision is going to be completely different to what's in yeah. your head yeah. but then it can be really easy to miss the mark I think with sound design and sometimes yeah. it really works and sometimes it's really jarring yeah. and it doesn't work one of the hardest things is just to get 
like the physicality of the animation like matched perfectly yeah with with the sound and another thing that people do a lot is like they'll just put music over the whole thing and like yeah. music's really important but it just it creates emotion really easily like it's almost like a it's like the easy way out kind of thing yeah it's like a really quick way to 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 be able to kind of you know plaster over stuff and and, and not 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 go into the detail of yeah, yeah. how animation develops but i mean what i find more so with you know, animation is that you're kind of working in tandem whereas if it's live action i would get the first edit first cut yeah and then so you have somewhere to start but with animation sometimes you're starting with like literally like style frames i always have to ask well what, what's the texture of this animation going to be like yeah, i need yeah. to know the textures i need you know and then before you even get to sort of like the editing or the how the flow of the piece pieces with with animation it's like in what world is it existing mm. you kind of need to know the physicality of the world yeah way. what how do you find the process of collaboration i mean because one thing that i always uh get is like from from whether it's a direct director or animator is uh they will say that I'll, i find it really hard to 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 kind of describe music or sound do you find do you find yeah do you find it it is hard because you don't really know obviously you don't want to sound like an idiot when you're talking to a expert about their thing when you know yeah. nothing about it <laughs> so you yeah. try and like find find a way to get your point across yeah i mean this project that we worked on uh, that we're going to talk about in a bit is yeah. like the perfect thing because they're made out of an object you can have in real life so like yeah. you just have squeaky balloons working with other people sometimes you don't like you don't necessarily have the luxury all the time of going into that level of detail working on small low budget stuff you have to um you get like one shot at it or yeah. like if they're if they're sort of doing you a bit of a favor on the project because it's yeah. got such a small budget you have to go okay well you have to give them more creative freedom which is fine and if you're working with someone you trust like it's great like it'll be fine but yeah. sometimes you have no idea what's going to come back if you if you're way off on the first first uh feedback yeah that's that's what that's where sometimes i i get worried where like the first feedback is like the harshest how do you like approach that do you start from scratch? Is it like, oh, okay, maybe we were off on the first one and try again, or? Actually, it's it's never it's never the case that you're you're way too off. I think it's just it's just that it's always going to be a process. But I think like with kind of libraries I think, uh, and being available, I, I think collaboration is not necessarily it's never a smooth ride. It's a process. It, it takes its time, you know. So it's not um, as long as you're kind of working, like you say, you're not way off brief. But you're you're working towards uh, something that that will need several rounds, you know. But I don't think I think sometimes people don't have the patience for collaboration. So maybe that's m why you might revert to a library track, or you might revert to kind of going if the client has enough money, they will just you know hire a, uh, a sort of a, a known uh, commercial track. But it's worth it, I think, from from the point of view of a director or an animator to practice that kind of method of just going through knowing that it's not going to be like you're not going to have something on the on the first go it's not going to answer all your wants and needs and what you imagine so I think as I progressed I started to kind of detach myself from being a composer and more towards a, a kind of a designer or like a creative director on the project rather and I think that helps to kind of keep a little bit of the ego of like I want it to kind of like Oh, I want it to kind of sound like this, and I and I imagine it like this. You know, you have to be a part of that process to help also the director and animator kind of arrive at what they mm. what they need. When you've been working so hard on something and you have this vision for it, worked on it for ages, like 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 a month or two months, and you've you're so focused on it, and then you give it to the sound, and the sound has such a massive impact on the yeah. way the thing yeah. feels, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. It's a shock. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a shock to the yeah. system. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the first few times you do that, you're like, "Oh my god, this is not how I imagined it," and and this is yeah. all wrong, and and blah blah blah. Like, it's really important to step back a little bit and go, yeah. "Okay, look, this project that was yours is now a collaboration. Like, it goes yeah. from yeah. being your thing to being a collaboration. So yeah. it, you have to accept someone else's ideas and their input and see how it changes and and yeah. like like sleep on it or if you have time or whatever, just to yeah. absorb it." more rather than immediately writing feedback <laughs> yeah yeah because it, it, uh, th that's exactly the point it's like you it can't be a one answer solution and you need to somehow find a way to come together 
and to, so that you can you can start to build the dialogue. But yeah. that's 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 where long long term kind of collaborations and yeah, exactly. you know, really help because then you start to build a short form and also trust, I guess. Uh, so with Olympops, did you? So what was the concept? Just balloons. Okay, we're gonna do. Where did the whole balloons kind of concept come from? Olympops is a animated project, so I did that while while I was full time there. So yeah, and I worked really closely with uh, Tom and Ed, who are the um, Tom's like the owner of Animate, and um, Ed's the uh, creative director. So the first thing we did is just get together and we're like, okay, we want to make something for the Olympics. Whenever I, whenever we have creative kickoff meetings with them, it's always a lot of fun. So we just sort of like throw a few jokes around and kind of relax into it. And yeah. Ed is really, he's really good at coming up with things very quickly. And the yeah. first thing that came out of his mouth was uh, Olympops, because okay. we were just like. <laughs> Whenever we come up with a name for stuff, it's like the first thing you do is try and make funny puns to make each other laugh. And we're like, OK, just like thinking about the name a lot. Like yeah. we set, we yeah. even set up a WhatsApp group of just names. And uh, I, I went through a lot of different things. And eventually I was just like, oh, just take Olympops because it was the best name that we had. And, yeah. and I'll just literally make the characters balloons. And it was as yeah. simple as that. And then and then it was just like, OK, well, what do we do with them? Like it's called Olympops, but we can't just have the characters just popping all the time because that's like one joke. I actually bought some balloons and then uh, started playing with them and just seeing what else we could do. So, for example, um, the wrestling one, you know, if, you, if you're trying to make balloon animals, quite often it will just like pop out of your hands and go yeah. back into it like a really long, yeah, yeah. straight balloon. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like playing with the materials and seeing what comes out. So yeah, and it was the same balloons that I gave to you for, to actually make the sounds. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I wasn't quite sure how many of the vocalizations could be made like that. How many of the actions could be? Uh, yeah, I mean uh, it's a, it's a really common thing I think for a, when you're making animation with a concept. Yeah, is to like have the sound keep the same concept. Yeah, it, I mean it's obviously that's going to make a more cohesive work of art, right? Yeah. So y you know you you never know until you. You start. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's so not going to be like making an atmosphere. Like, you know, I mean, like on the on the diving board one. Yeah. You need, it's so nice the way you ended up with the final sounds is to have like a bit of crowd sounds on, on all of them. And how yeah. are you going to make that with balloons? It's, it yeah. doesn't really yeah. make sense. I yeah. think, and as long as that's kind of like, that's just like the bed layer of like background sound that you're not really paying attention to. Yeah. Or like all the main sounds with balloons. and It, it did need to be... Um, Kind of bolstered with other effects. So, for instance, I separated the the, the background sounds, you know, as a, it, it, with the foreground sounds and the sounds of the uh, characters and so on and so forth. But yeah, obviously, you can't do the background sounds with just using balloons or anything like that. So, I just tried to stick to it as strictly as possible mm. because I think those kind of limits. That's where the fun kind of really kicks in, where you're just trying to okay, let me see how much I can push this to yeah. to just be using. But often, like. When you go into the se session, I, d I try to keep it quite simple in terms of you want your source recording to be just as best as possible, you know, and you don't, you don't, because you don't want to go into the session and then have to mess around with it. Like if I go into kind of a session and I have to really EQ something to get it, you know, like do corrective e EQing on it or uh, th this type of approach, mm. then I kind of know that I have I've kind of missed the mark with it, you know, and not recorded it. Uh, well enough to be able to, yeah. Because then I would make a sound sound like a different sound. Yeah, and I'll be and I'll be spending most of my time uh, a kind of a corrective approach rather than starting with a sound that is already is good quality enough to 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 kind of start you playing. But it wasn't like I, I used a, like a really sort of complicated process or a really elaborate process. I just had a like. Uh, I think uh, an AKGC 1000S. Yeah, it sounds like it's a really similar process to the way I, I think about when I'm making an animation project. Is just keeping it simple. Like you don't need to even even the technical side of animation doesn't have to be complicated. If you're just doing something simple, like the characters in the Limpops. Yeah. A lot of them aren't fully rigged. Like I've yeah. just rigged the bit that you see. Do you know what I mean? When uh, you mean uh, when you say rigged, those are the moving parts. Yeah, so like, like yeah, moving um, elements. So it's, I mean, it sounds like really complicated, but really it's just a way of attaching body parts together. You you want to move the hips, and yeah. then when you move the hips, you want the feet to stay on the ground, and you want the rest of the body to move with the upper body. Okay, so, so that's like it's attached attached to each other. That's like a fundamental in in uh, rig animation. Yeah, yeah, like that's something that you need to technically like 
you have to know. know how to do that. But then, <laughs> yeah. like, it's, there's no fixed way of doing it, especially if you're doing fairly simple animation. Yeah. It's um, just do whatever works for that. Keeping it as simple as possible is just the best way, both technically and creatively. So, I mean, for instance, Olympops creatively, it's really simple. We just like basic colors in the background, really simple character design. And then, and then what adds the detail is the idea, what the characters are doing yeah. and, and uh, what's the world that they're in, how they're moving, and that all adds together. If you've, got, if you've set up a really complicated scene and you've got a complicated character, you're going to be so busy focused on, on that stuff that concept the goes out the window, yeah. the, uh, the movement goes out the window because it's so difficult to make things move. Um, so you end up being really bogged down with the technical side and you're not able to focus on just making a really nice, satisfying animation. Exactly. It, it, it's exactly the same. The main thing that I want to do is just get into the session straight away, get start working with the, with the image straight away. You know, The reason for that is it, you want to start trying things over, over the image so, so that you can start to kind of get an idea, get a sense of the... Yeah, the physicality of things. So in the case of uh, Olympops, it was, it was, you know, I wanted to get in front of it straight away, mainly to figure out, okay, does this need to be, like I said, uh, does this need to be bolstered or can we just, can I do most of the vocalizations and kind of movements and so on and so forth with, with, uh, with balloons? So when I started layering up stuff, you know, I like playing around with the balloon and, uh, Making when I was recording it, I was a little bit like you know using the nozzle of the b balloon to make the you know, <laughs> like yeah, different yeah. kind of sounds, uh, and I was like okay, you know really trying to make the balloon like do as many but <laughs> you know it's like a Just balloon that like you know, it does, you know you could like do many different things to it you're like flopping it and like smack it around everywhere and so on and so forth. so a lot of balloons got <laughs> a lot of balloons were burst in that process but yeah. uh, I, d I didn't go through the animation. And be like, okay, try to like foley this thing, you know, like, okay, it, you know, <laughs> you oh, know right, like, watching it, yeah, yeah, yeah watching yeah. the animation and just trying, trying to, to do, make that yeah, yeah, no, 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 like I, I don't like that approach. I like, I like um, sort of like when you're surprised by things, you know, when you when you just throw something on and it's just like, oh wow, okay, okay, there's something interesting. Most mm -hmm. of the vocalizations were, or the movements were like that, where I just kind of took a, uh, a slice of sound and just put it on. I was like, oh, okay, this works. But then you need to figure out how to make it sit in the image. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that's where then my method is to sort of use EQ and pitch. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to mess with a, a whole bunch of other sort of plugins. Also, you lose the fun when you, you want to have pace because you know you have um, a certain window of like where your concentration is fully on this thing, mm. um, where you start to kind of wane towards the end of the day and you're kind of like, you start to lose that. I want to make sure that I have the, the, the most amount of energy to put into the creative side of it rather than the, the sort of the technical nuances, you know? Mm. It's, it's more sketch work. He's just placing things and just seeing how things work and, oh, this could work for that bit and so on and so forth. And, and so it's like a really messy way of working, but yeah, yeah, yeah. somehow, you start to then form, like yeah. I guess you characters. get to try out, out a lot of stuff quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. So and just like chisel, it's it's like a process of kind of chiseling at it. You know.